Hi, I'm Greg from gregsbasicelectronics.com and this video is on how to build a two LED flasher. Let's take a look at the schematic diagram first to see what it is that we're building. This is a uh, diagram for a two transistor flasher circuit. It uses a 2N2222 transistor, which is two of them. These are general purpose NPN transistors. Uh, they're very inexpensive and they can be found everywhere. They're everywhere. So 2N2222s are a good choice. This uses four diodes in this circuit. Two of the diodes are light emitting diodes, LEDs. You can have any color you want. Uh, mine, I think, were red. I have two red ones. You can do the red one and the green one, or any color you want. There are two LEDs. Then there are two regular silicon diodes. These are just plain garden variety silicon diodes um, that uh, you can pick up anywhere. Uh, just make sure they're, they're inexpensive because these really should be very cheap. Uh, there are add-ins that I put on the circuit later after I built the original. They are to improve the operation and they discharge the capacitors rapidly. So um, these are added later and they aren't on the original, but we'll talk about that as we go along. It uses two capacitors, 100 microfarads at 16 volts. These capacitors determine the flash rate of the oscillator. As you increase these capacitors, the flash rate is slower. It takes longer to charge and the diode then will stay on longer and the other one that's off will stay off longer. As you decrease the capacitor, if you go down towards 50 microfarads, things run faster and they'll flash faster. So I have this set right now for 100 microfarads, which is a good value to start with. Later on, if you want to play around with it, you can change these values and have a good time. By making them the same, they flash equal. If you make them different, uh, they will flash at a different rate on, the, on either side. So it kind of gets weird. But start out with them about 100 microfarads each and um, then play with it from there. So that's this is a schematic. It's very simple, very straightforward. It uses um, four resistors. And we'll talk about that when we talk about the parts list, which happens to be next. Here's what we need to build it with. We need two 470 ohm quarter watt resistors. We need two 10,000 ohm quarter watt resistors. We need two capacitors, 100 microfarads at 16 volts or higher. Um, this thing will run on between 9 and 12 volts, so we want to stay around 16 volts. As you increase this, this voltage, uh, rating on the capacitor, the physical size of the capacitor will get bigger and it may not fit on your circuit board, but it will work the same. It just may not fit. So stay around 16 volts and the size ought to be about right. Okay, for the diodes, we have two general purpose diodes that we talked about and two LEDs. The transistors again are type 2N222, they're NPN or whatever is equivalent to that that you can find. As long as it's NPN and it's just a general purpose type transistor, it'll work fine. Uh, here's what they look like when they're laid out. You see the circuit board there, the battery connector, the LEDs, the transistors, the capacitors. You won't see those two diodes that I mentioned because, like I said, I put those in later after I um, made these, these photos. But everything's here, plus there's two other diodes that go in there, which, we, again, we'll talk about. All right, let's take a look at getting started with the construction. This is the circuit board that I used. Uh, this circuit board has uh, has been um, plated through the holes here with some copper. This pr uh, provides a great place to solder. So you can stick the uh, uh, wires through the holes and then solder them to the copper. And that works real, real well. Um, you can also use the kind of uh, boards where you plug the parts in and uh, they don't require any soldering or anything. And they're, they're great for temporary use. Uh, they're not made for anything permanent. So since I wanted to keep this sort of as a permanent circuit, I used a board that I can solder to. Uh, if you just want to experiment, you can use one. You just, um, just poke them in the holes and you don't need to solder. Okay. So let's take a look at um, putting on the, uh, the parts. Okay. First thing we install on here are the transistors. Now I flip the board over and the transistors go in from the other side. The thing to notice here is that they are facing in opposite directions. That is so that we can take the emitter wires on both transistors and face them towards each other and connect them together. That saves running wires all around the board. So they're facing in opposite directions and they're approximately in the middle of the, of the board. That leaves room for the parts to go around it. Okay. Okay. Next, let's take a look at um, how we're going to solder these. these are the, since these are the first parts on the board, we'll solder these first. Now we add 
we solder each wire, uh, or lead of the transistor in this case, individually. And the thing to watch for here is there's, that there's no solder between them. There's no solder bridges between these wires. Got to make sure there are no solder bridges. If you uh, do make a solder bridge, you want to heat up the solder bridge and shake the board and remove that solder so it falls off. Then add, if you need to, add a little bit more solder. You probably won't need to, but if you need to, add some more solder and then continue on. It, uh, it's pretty easy to fix a bridge, but you just have to make sure that you don't have the bridge to begin with because it won't work if these are shorted together. So that's something you much, must look for as you go along here is to make sure there are no shorts between the wires. All right, let's move along. Now we start adding the parts as we go. And uh, I just stick them to the holes, solder them, and trim off the leaves. It's real simple. Until you get all the parts soldered in, you just kind of add them on one at a time, flip the board order over, solder them, trim the leaves, and continue. Now, as the board uh, grows and all the parts get on there, you'll notice that you'll have to be very careful, again, that you don't short any wires out to the board's uh, copper, to the other parts, or anywhere else. So make, make very sure that things are not shorted together. Now, to connect the wires together, you simply follow the circuit diagram, what connects to what, and you can see how to connect the wires together. It's, it's very clear, very simple, very straightforward. But the trick is, do not short anything together. No solder bridges between any of the wires. Be very careful about that. Okay? Now, when it's done, or in this case, almost done, there are a couple of long wires that have to be run. So I use insulated wire to to, um, to run these with, and that uh, prevents any wires from shorting out when they touch the edge. So just make sure you have insulated wire for any long wire runs that you uh, that you have to use. Okay, so that's pretty simple. All right, now the finished circuit will look something like this. You have the transistors, the capacitors, the uh, LEDs. What's not shown here are the other two diodes that I talked about, and they go right. Uh, beside these resistors, these two base resistors. And in fact, if you look on the schematic, you'll see that they are connected directly in parallel, one each on these resistors. One diode connects to this resistor in parallel, the other diode connects to this resistor in parallel. So you put them on the circuit board here right next to these resistors so you can connect the wires right across to, to the same points that these resistors connect to. Okay? That's, uh, that's all it is. Now be careful with the diodes when you put them in and make sure you get them right. They are polarized. So make sure you get them in, in there correctly so that the uh, uh, cathode and the, and the end with the, with the wire is, is going to ground, which is down here towards the bottom. So make sure that both diodes are pointing in the same direction and to in carefully. So that's what it should look like when you're about done. So now before you operate it, you want to go through the checklist here. You want to check both capacitors and make sure that they're in correctly because they are polarized. Check both transistors and make sure that they are soldered in right and there are no bridges. Check all the diodes, the LEDs and the silicon diodes are incorrectly. Check uh, again, both LEDs are incorrectly, and look again for solder bridges and other things that uh, uh, might prevent the circuit from not operating like, right, like bad solder joints. Now, you solder on the 9 volt battery connector and you're ready to give it a test. Check over everything one more time, make sure it looks right. And you connect the battery, but be ready to remove it really quick if it doesn't work. This is to prevent from uh, something from burning out something. So we'll try not to burn up any parts. Okay, the LED lights should now be blinking. And if they're not, then you want to check everything wire by wire until you find the problem. You usually find that it's a short between two wires, a uh, capacitor or dialed in backwards, or sometimes it's uh, simply a, a transistor uh, is miswired. But normally this thing should work the very first time. And it's a, a fun project to build. Now, if you enjoyed building that, you might be very interested in looking at this introduction to basic electronics. It's a hands-on downloadable course that I've designed uh, to teach basic electronics uh, very quickly. Uh, I teach the necessary things and not anything that you just, no junk, no, no things to memorize that you never use, only the things that you're really going to be using every day. Uh, it's a very uh, good introduction, introductory course to basic electronics, and you'll find it at gregsbasicelectronics.com forward slash learn basic electronics. So if you're interested in this, and this was a lot of fun, you may very well be interested in, in my introduction to basic electronics course. Okay, that's it. Hope you enjoy this and have a lot of fun building this flasher circuit. I know I did. Talk to you later.